Hello, this is Lisa De Nicolitz and I read somewhere that and going to leap into this one with this fabulous quote. Writers are dangerous people, which is just fantastic. Writers are dangerous people. And that is from a book I read really recently. It's called The House Gun by Nadine Gordimer, set in South Africa in 1998. And it's just an amazing book. Uh, about morality in post-apartheid South Africa, and I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, the second thing today is a writing tip from, um, it's a newsletter I follow by Catherine Mockler, who's a marvelous writer, and she has this great newsletter, it's Send My Love to Anyone. And she also has something called Send My Love to Anyone Weekly Prompts. And this is for this week, she says, when it comes to writing, just jump in. In. Every writer has experienced the fear of the blank page at some point. Just like facing a cool lake for a swim, sometimes you just have to jump in. You'll never get into the water if you think about how cold it will be, or the hard rocks at the bottom, or the water snakes. And yes, sometimes there are water snakes. The same is true for writing. Try not to think too much about what you're writing what you are writing about when you're doing it, instead just write. Don't analyze it. Don't critique it. Don't worry about the snakes. There will be time for that later. End of quote. So I think that's really pithy and wonderful advice. Next up is um, a quote by, or insights by Kenneth White, who is the publisher at Sutherland Press. And he has a newsletter called Shush, which is the tabloid ed edition. And this one is the K-pop bookseller. It used to be that the best thing that could happen to a book was that it was seen in the hands of someone boarding Air Force One. Then Oprah took over. Then Reese. Now it's RM of K-pop's BTS. RM is a rapper. K-pop is a Korean pop music is Korean pop music. BTS is a sensational boy band run by the publicly traded record label, founded by billionaire hit bang Si Yuk. Twenty six years old and already in the second decade of his career, RM was recently spotted by a photographer eating a bowl of noodles and reading Early Death, which has been out of print for decade for a decade. The book deals with a bunch of Korean artists who died young. The rapper's, aggressively, uh, the rapper's aggressively online fans, who go by the name of ARMY, A-R-M-Y, demanded copies from the publisher, and within three days, three days, it was back in print, and is now a bestseller at South Korea's largest book chain. So now Ken, Ken comments that Sutherland House will be sending their entire four list to RM. And I guess we should all too. And the next up um, is a quote from something called Writer's High Five, which is a net a newsletter from so you want to write.org. And it's a fabulous newsletter and they have a quote. And this is the quote that motivates us to write. Every single day, we slaughter our finest impulses. That is why we get a heartache when we read those lines written by the hand of a master and recognize them as our own, as the tender shoots which we stifled because we lacked the faith to believe in our own powers, our own criterion of truth and beauty. Every man, when he gets quiet, when he becomes desperately honest with himself, is capable of uttering pro profound truths. We all derive from the same source. There's no mystery about the origin of things. We are all part of creation, all kings, all poets, all musicians. We only have to open up to discover what is already there. And that is a quote by Henry Miller, which I thought was wonderful. And I'd like to end up with um, this one, which I read in Honorarium, which is a new book out by Nathaniel Moore. And it's, it's, a, fas it's a fascinating book, and I'll be quoting from it um, fairly often. And in it, um, he talks about veteran BC poet 
Tom Wayman says that rejection is part of what defines a writer as well as preparing them for greater disappointments in their careers. And he says, this is a quote from Tom, I think for any beginning writer, being steadily rejected by literary magazines helps them get used to the world not really welcoming their amazing insights and dazzling command of the language. Since most novels, like most books, are in effect published straight into the warehouse, i.e. sink into oblivion with astonishing speed, I can imagine someone whose first publication is a novel being stunned and amazed at discovering after publication how little the real world really cared about their work. Whereas a rejection-scarred writer, veteran of many submissions to literary magazines, is well prepared for the resounding silence and disregard that is the fate of most publications. So kind of words for the wise and kind of funny as well. So that's it for this week. And I really hope that you're enjoying this podcast as much as I'm enjoying bringing it to you. Thank you so much. Bye.